his tough, tough business tactics is his view of the world. What Kroc brought to McDonald's was a dedication to uniformity and conformity. Everything the same at hundreds of locations. That was going to be the key to their success of expanding. The building looking the same, the interior looking the same, and the food tasting the same at many locations. So here's a quote from Ray Kroc that I think is very telling, not only in explaining the success of McDonald's, but in giving you a sense of the fast food mentality. Quote, we have found out that we cannot trust some people who are non-conformists. We will make conformists out of them in a hurry. The organization cannot trust the individual. The individual must trust the organization. Speed, convenience, uniformity, conformity, everything the same. Now, that, that quote of his was from the 1950s, but that still is at the heart of the operating system of McDonald's. One of their uh, corporate slogans a few years ago said it best, one taste worldwide. So out of this mentality was the impulse to conquer nature, control nature, worship technology in the machine, and bring this uniformity and conformity everywhere at a profit. So, what was the impact of this uh, on American society, and particularly on the workers of America? Not really very much for quite a while. Uh, the first McDonald's was 1948. By 1968, there were a thousand McDonald's in the United States. Not a big impact at all in a country of this size. And all those McDonald's, they use fresh ground beef, they use real potatoes that they peeled every day. So this country can carry a thousand McDonald's without you know, any real impact. Today there are 30,000 McDonald's, about half of them in the United States, and tens of thousands of restaurants created in an imitation of McDonald's along the same lines. And McDonald's now is an enormous impact, on, uh, has an enormous impact on our economy, on our agriculture, on our culture. Uh, today, McDonald's is the largest purchaser of beef in the United States, the biggest purchaser of chicken, of pork, of potatoes. These are the staples of the American diet. Biggest purchaser of lettuce, biggest purchaser of apples, biggest distributor of toys in the United States. <laughs> and they have pushed constantly for uniformity and conformity. Um, it used to be fresh food at a McDonald's. But as they began to expand in the early 1970s and expand rapidly, they really wanted the food to be everywhere the same. And they really didn't want anyone cooking anything. So they switched to frozen foods. And they cut back the number of suppliers. Just for example, in beef, in the late 1960s, McDonald's bought its beef from 175 local companies. Uh, today, it buys its beef from five. And it has pushed and pushed the centralization and the industrialization of the meatpacking industry so that the top four meatpacking companies today have more control of the market than 100 years ago when Upton Sinclair wrote The Jungle. And The Jungle was all about the power of the beef trust. Well, the top four meatpacking companies have more power today than the beef trust ever had. And there's one meatpacking company today, a Tyson, which is the biggest meatpacking company in the history of the world. There's never been an industrial organization like this. And they became that way to supply McDonald's, KFC, Burger King, the fast food industry. Uh, this has had a huge impact on workers. Uh, McDonald's has really perfected the control of workers in their kitchens. And I was at a fast food convention 
when I was researching Fast Food uh, Nation. And I heard the top executives of the industry speaking quite openly, not knowing that I was there, uh, about the key was to de-skill the workforce. That they wanted workers with as few skills as possible. Because workers with skills have to be paid a good wage. Workers without skills are interchangeable and disposable. And you're not dependent on any one worker. And that is why when you go to the kitchen of a McDonald's, you will see a lot of machines reheating frozen food and buzzers and lights telling workers what to do, and now pictures on the wall of how the sandwiches should be assembled so that the workers need not know how to read. Uh, the fast food industry became the largest employer of minimum wage workers in the United States. And it should come as no surprise that the fast food industry has been the leading opponent of any increase in the minimum wage for decades. As a result, the minimum wage today in the United States is almost 50% less adjusted for inflation than it was in the early 1970s when this industry started to grow. So much of its growth has been dependent on cutting the wages of the poorest workers in the United States. Poorest workers in America have effectively gotten a 50% pay cut. Now, these jobs in this industry are now rightly known as Mick jobs. Mick jobs, if you look it up in the dictionary, are jobs with low pay, high turnover. The turnover rate in some of these restaurants is three or four hundred percent a year, meaning the workers will be on the job three or four months before leaving, and no benefits. And other industries have seen how profitable this has been for McDonald's and the other fast food chains and done all they could to imitate that uh, labor arrangement, the meatpacking industry being one of them. As these meatpacking companies got bigger and more powerful, they started to break unions, they started to import recent immigrants and illegal immigrants because they were the most vulnerable and the most easily exploited. As recently as the late 1970s, to be a meatpacking worker in the United States was to have one of the highest paid industrial jobs in this country. It's like being an auto worker. It provided a good middle class life. If you were a meatpacking worker, your spouse need not work. If you were a meatpacking worker, your kids could go to college or they might want to join you at the plant. There were waiting lists at American slaughterhouses because the jobs were so good. This is as recently as the late 1970s. Uh, thanks to these new big meatpacking companies. To be a meatpacking worker today is to have one of the lowest uh, incomes of any industrial worker. It is to have one of the most dangerous jobs in the United States. Uh, poor immigrants are being injured and fired uh, at a remarkable rate, simply disposed, treated like disposable objects. And the turnover rate is enormous, so there are no waiting lists at American meatpacking plants. If any of you want employment there, they will take you in a minute. As a matter of fact, they have recently been using uh, inmates on work release and uh, bringing in people from shelters. They just want people with a pulse. So no, no waiting lists, but a turnover rate of about 100% a year. Whole new workforce in what was, in my lifetime, one of the best paid industrial jobs.